Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right back again from Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty Dirty in the Dirty South of Alabama is where I lay my head. Um, forgive the progress. You guys know uh, from one of the other previous videos or from another video that I was moving um, and moving shops and changing locations. So now we got a little bigger spot still in the process, but of getting everything lined up, but the orders does not does not stop coming in they do not stop coming in so i had to pretty much just set up shop real quick and go ahead and get things back up and running again and this video is stemming off of a question in the letters guild that i thought was very important and it was another one of those questions to where a lot of crafters give their opinion and because in the leather world, and I want you guys to understand, in the leather world, a lot of times there are not a bunch of right and wrong answers, but um, there are a bunch of opinionated answers, and it's basically up to the crafter themselves, what you guys like, in order, and what works best for you, and what projects you are doing. So, with that, uh, I'm going to jump right off into this because the question came up about stitching and stitching grooves. Um, the, the person that was asking the question was asking whether do, do uh, some of the other more experienced crafters out there, do they do a stitching groove and then sew their, uh, lay their stitching lines? Uh, do they not do a stitching groove and have uh, um, just go ahead and, and stitch or sew up their pieces or projects as is. Now, the thing with that is, again, this is one of those questions that where is what works best for you. I myself, some projects, depending upon the thickness of the leather itself, um, I don't do a stitching groove. Now, I'm getting more into the habit of stitching, of, of doing stitching grooves for this one reason here. And that reasoning is um, to lay my stitches below, not below, but parallel with, with the, the leather itself. And what I mean by that is uh, if I was stitching a wallet, if I, if I want to... Uh, I want my my wax thread to be a part of the decoration or a part of the um, the the enhancement of the piece. So if I'm doing a uh, um, a wallet, so to speak, I will then use a stitching groove to cut a groove into my leather to where I want my my wax thread to lay down level or even with the leather itself because now that is a pri a piece that is going uh is going to get wear a lot so if my stitches were raised uh if 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 my stitches were raised on top of the leather then the friction of going in and out of your pocket with the leather will wear that wax thread down over a period of time and then even if you buck stitch you're still going to have a, a part where the, the 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 thread will fray and potentially break. So in that regard, I would cut a stitching groove, which this little jewel right here is a stitching groover. And if you guys don't have one of these, one is a great piece to put into your arsenal. Even on belts, I, I cut a stitching groove in my belt because I want my, my thread to lay down the, even with the leather or even possibly below. You don't want to groove too deep uh, because uh, now me personally, I don't think, um, and somebody else, a more leather experienced crafter would tell you there's no such thing as grooving too deep, but yeah, it's a difference between stitching a groove or, or cutting a groove and gouging. That is two different tools. And I'll show you a stitch in the gouger. This is a gouger here, a V shaped gouger. You guys can see that. Um, and if you're looking at that head on, you can see the V into the cutter there. Now this gouge is deep and it's an adjustment on there to where you can run your uh, gouging in 
or you can run it out. And I, I think you guys can see that to where you can screw it out to where it'll come out that much. Maybe let me get some light on this uh, to where you can see where that group that runs out a lot. Uh, there we go. Or you can run it in and you can take some of the groove or the gouging out. There we go. Well, you can see just barely see it. There, these are two different tools. Two different tools. Um, if I'm doing a portfolio cover or a case or a Bible cover or something that I want to that's going to be bending a lot, then I would gouge out that a little bit. Now, with this tool here, the actual tip here, it works like a guide, so to speak, especially if you for stitching. So think in terms of your belt. Um, if you're running a, 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 a guide with your swivel knife like this here, it this presses right up against the edge of the belt and this does the same thing so I can cut my groove out. So now with that being said, I'm going to tell you guys a little tip and a secret that I use and um, it can also help with your, it helps seat your stitches or your wax thread. It helps seat those to where it actually pushes them down inside of your stitching groove that you cut. And that, my friends, um, if I can find it real quick, I use that in, in conjunction with my stitching groove. And again, forgive me for not having everything set up right and properly but uh, I can't find it right off hand uh, I'm gonna pause the video and then I'm gonna find my, my secret weapon so you guys stand by all right and we're back so with that uh, my secret weapon is this right here my stitching wheel now, you can use this in multiple ways. Uh, it comes with different, different width wheels or different size wheels as far as between the points. Um, if you're just going to use it to simulate a stitch, which this is what I started out with before I actually got off into stitching and wax threading and all of that stuff. Um, I used just a stitching wheel to simulate a stitch in a lot of my pieces. But as my craftsmanship continue to develop and grow and go. Um, I started doing more wax thread stitching. Um, and, uh, and this, I learned, will help seat your um, stitches inside of that group. So I'm gonna change the camera and angle it a little bit so you guys can actually see what we're working with and how we actually do this. Because uh, I want to show you guys how it's done. Now, this stitching groove is, if you guys are right-handed, and you guys can see how this will actually groove, and it'll pull just a channel of leather, uh, of your leather up. And it is perfect for, for getting your stitching lines ready. And all that it does uh, let me change this lighting a little bit. Let me cut that light off and turn this one. Yes. So you guys can see that groove that it cut. That's what your stitching groove does. And then you can come back and follow that up with your chisel punch. Whether you do it first or second, to me it really doesn't make a difference as long as it's done. Um, and you can punch your stitching holes right there inside of that. And it also works great too if you're going to lace. If you're, if you're doing lacing, uh, you can use your stitching groove to lace as well. But since we're just doing this for the sake of stitching, um, and then I'm just going to show you guys what I mean. I'm going to lace a little quick piece. Uh, I mean, stitch a quick piece. Um, with some wax thread just to show you um, how I laid this down. So I'm not going to 
actually uh, saddle stitch this. I'm just going to do a running stitch, what we call a running stitch. But the same principles as a, a saddle stitch, just so you guys can see. Uh, oh, man. And actually, you'll have to use your owl, too, your stitching owl to work with this as well to spread apart your lacing. So let me do this real quick. I'm going to pause the video again and then go ahead and, and use my stitching hour to spread these out so I can lace these up real quick. Okay, so we're just about done with uh, using our stitching hour. And uh, I'm just going to show you guys how, how I do this. So we're just going to run a few um, into this. And we're just going to stitch these up real quick like. So if I was doing an actual piece, I would run this in. Of course, you, you guys will do a, a I, I like buck stitching. Buck stitching is something to, to it will really in, increase and enhance your pieces. The stitching holds a lot better. Actually, I think buck stitching is better than using a sewing machine because the stitching is a lot stronger than uh, as opposed to a lock stitch because you're doing the figure eight techniques all the way up through the piece. So even if your one of your stitches become undone, um, your, your saddle stitching will hold in place. And so just to sh show you guys, but I'm just a fan of saddle stitching. You know, uh, that's one element or one thing that I use in my pieces when I'm doing advertising or what I'm selling is that everything that I do is hand done, no machines. Uh, and that's just a selling point. I'm, I'm a, a traditionalist and an old school. And, and I know you guys can probably go out there and spend a lot of money on these Cobra Fours and these Atlers and all this other kind of stuff and the Boss. And I mean, yeah, it speeds production up. Don't get me wrong. It does do that. It does speed production up a lot. And um, you can get a lot done. So you guys can see my stitching is done there. And you see how kind of rough angle that is a little bit where you just really, it's just, but hold on and let me show you the stitching wheel. Now, for those of you who have a stitching wheel, I use the one eighth wheel because my chisel punch is one eighth. So uh, even all of my punches are one eighth because I just like the spacing on that. Whether I'm using the three prong, um, the multi prong, or I have another one that's a four that's uh, up here as well. I don't want to waste any more time by trying to find it. But actually, I'm going to take my stitching wheel. So let me angle this down so you guys can see this. Man, why is my camera funny? Okay. And I'm just going to take that and run it inside right over the top of my stitches. And this actually seats them a lot better. Oh, let's get the light right. It seats your stitches down inside of your punches that you punched. I really like that. That's just a little hidden secret or a little hidden jewel that you guys can capture and take with you. Uh, it doesn't matter what thread you use. Uh, uh, I, I use all my wax thread. Uh, actually, I buy all my wax thread. Uh, it comes on a spool like this. Uh, I'm an advocate for for the Wish app. Not an advocate, but I have had no wrong out the Wish app where you can get, uh, you get, uh, I think this is 100 yards on this for a dollar in this wax thread. And you can get multiple colors. I have all of the basic colors, all eight basic colors plus pink and white um, that comes with it all for a dollar. So if you know you're going to be doing a lot of stitches, stitching, I would tell you guys to go ahead and spend the 15 bucks and get you multiple colors, double double colors, uh, two, two, three spools of the same color. And that'll last you a long time. Um, and especially now, of course, you know, if you're, buck, if you're buck stitching like I do, then you're going to have to go seven times the length of whatever piece that you're working on to do to complete your buck, buck stitching. But um, 
The only downside to that is I can't use my stitching owl, which is a two in one. It has the point on the end like just your regular owl. Plus it also has the thread uh, that runs up in there. Now Tandy sells these little spools. I think they sell spools for like four, three ninety nine or four ninety nine. Uh, and you're only getting 25 yards on it. So why not get 75 more yards and it's two, three dollars cheaper? You know, that's what I'm saying. Remember, you guys, save your money on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end. And then, you know, that will really, you're going to get the same result, if not better result. I think buck stitching is a better result. And then now that's the three tools or the two tools that I would like I like to use when I use my stitching groove. Uh, I use my stitching groove, then I'll lace my, my stitches out, uh, lay my stitching out, and then I'll follow that right back up with my stitching wheel. And this can be adjusted to whatever. Now you guys might have a quarter punch, they also have a quarter wheel. So just whatever is up to you that you like to use, then you guys can use, use that. But uh, as I said, the question in the gear was to groove or not to groove. It's completely up to you. Um, I, I'm just starting to become to the point to where I basically groove everything because I, I utilize the threading, the wax threading, as a part of the 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 decoration. And when you really do it right especially on, on your tan pieces that you do, your buck tan, your British tan, your, your, your saddle tans, your whatever tans you use, especially using it with that cream wax thread or that white wax thread. When you lay that down right, it really makes it pop. And what it makes it work with the groove is, is when you're running that stitching wheel across that, all of the parts that you groove that thread, the stitching wheel will lay that thread right down into that channel. So, I hope this helped you guys out uh, again with another video. Uh, just a great, uh, it was a good question. And please don't take offense um, because there were like 59 different posts and some people were saying the same thing and some people were saying, nah, I don't do and no, nah, I do this and no, nah, I do that. And there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. To those crafters, that's what works best for them with what they are doing. So again, I would encourage you guys to do it just like myself. Um, what I do, I watch multiple videos. I, um, I talk and con um, conversate with multiple crafters. Some of them that has been doing this crafting thing far longer than I have. I mean, they beat me by 20, 30 years, some of these people. And I listen to all of those nuggets of information. And then I apply that to my skill set and what I do. And then I make it my own. So basically, I take this uh, a little bit from this person, a little bit from that person, a little bit from this person, and some from this person. And then I make it a premier leather crafter's piece with what I'm doing. So with that, you know, I hope you guys, this, this uh, gave you a little bit more insight about the stitching groove, when to use it, when not to use it. I personally would say, hey, you can't go wrong if you use it on every piece. You can also average that into the cost because that's more time that you are putting into a piece, more detail. It really makes that thread pop. When you uh, then, especially when you run that stitching wheel right over the top of that thread and to seat it down in that groove, it really makes your work stand out. This is the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South, you know, telling you guys, hey, happy crafting, and I'll see you on the other side. Peace.